Hello. Hi, this is, uh, I'm just here to um, do, a, I guess, an analysis on something that I'm learning today, and I thought that I'd like to share it with you guys. So basically what we learned today that is based on the gastric system of the, um, the body. So here we observe the gastric pits, the G cell, the mucus cells, the mucus neck cells, the parietal cells, the chief cells, as well as the gastric gland. And one thing that we need to remember about these things is that um, the gastric secretions that we observe, uh, we have tubular glands in mucosa of the proximal regions that secrete gastric juice containing the pepsinogen and acid and the mucus. So here when we observe the mucus neck cells, um, the mucus neck cells are responsible for that. Uh, uh, we observe that their functions are actually quite uh, different compared to the parietal cells and the chief cells. So we have to know that um, the chief cells, the secret pepsinogens, right? And uh, the, these secrete pepsinogen. And what pepsinogen does, they're usually inside the deep within the tubular gland. And uh, while the, the parietal cells, these are the ones that secrete acid oxyntic. These are acid secreting oxyntic cells. And uh, they, they secrete acid oxyntic cells. And uh, they're responsible for the um, you know the digestion and hydrochloric acid especially and they're close to the gland with the opening however um, the things that we have to consider is the, the two glands that secrete the numerous uh, gastric pits uh, they are the ones that drain to the lumen of the stomach and these glands contain mucus neck cells so these things would then drain the gastric pits and they include the mucus neck cells right so basically, when we, when we consider the mucus nut cells, we have to remember that there is isosmotic secretions of uh, hydrochloric acid within this. We have hydrochloric acid, as we observe hydrochloric acid. It's uh, primarily a very, very acidic. The pH in the body, in the, in particular in the stomach, in the GIT, is usually a pH of 1. And, um, you know, 1 in a scale of 1 to 10 is quite acidic. 10, the, physio the physiological the physiological pH in the body is usually around 7.4. So imagine, and now the lower you get in pH is actually more acidic. So let's say an example, we have um, a uh, pH of 10, that's quite basic, that's not acidic. But if we have a pH of seven, you know, that's, a, that's more acidic. And now imagine in the stomach, gastric secretions are pH of one, so therefore it's very acidic. So inside the cell, they, we have carbon dioxide and, and water, right? So the, the potassium inside the lumen will come inside the cell as the hydrogen moves into the lumen. And when this happens, the bicarbonate, bicarbonate is HCO3 for those that are chemistry uh, specialists. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a medical student, so I'm not really that good in chemistry. But uh, for in a bi biomedical point of view, um, you know, just average. <laughs> so just remember that, okay? So potassium from the lumen will come inside the cell as hydrogen comes into the lumen. And uh, as I said before, hydro uh, bicarbonate goes inside, goes out of the cell, I mean, and into the interstitium as chlorine from the interstitium moves into the cell. And the ATP is spent and moves into the cell from the interstitium. And when this happens, as this moves out from the cell into the interstitium, the potassium from the interstitium will then go into the cell, right? And as a result, H2O will, from the interstitium will go through the cell lumen and, to, and, into, and into the lumen itself. So we observe that uh, distal, distal regions and glands do not possess cheap or eccentric cells, but they do produce a lot of mucus. And the reason for this is because they, the G cells that synthesize and release gastrin into the inter interstitium, they help in the movement of that. The mucus helps in the motility, right? So in total, we have two to, you, did you know that in totality, we do have like around two to three uh, liters of fluids that are released daily. And in the rest, through the stomach, we produce um, bicarbonate-rich isoosmotic fluid and when this is in, when this is uh, stimulated, uh, will cause the production of large volumes of gastric juice, with the pepsinogens, gastric lipase, and mucus ions, ions, and also intrinsic factor. So those are the things that we take, take in consideration uh, involving the different kinds of the uh, in different kinds of um, secretions of these things, right? So remember that we have the gastric pit. The gastric pit is in the this is in the stomach, right? Remember the stomach. We have three things. We have the fundus. We have the fundus, we have the body, we have the antrum, and we have the pylorus, right? These are the different parts of the stomach. And now part of the stomach, we do have these gastric pits. I'm just going to reiterate this again with gastric pits. And inside the gastric pits, we have what is called 
the G cells, which are primarily found here. And then here we have the mucus neck cells, mucus neck cells, and then we have the periathal cells below that, uh, inferior to that. And just uh, inferior to the periathal cells, we have the chief cells, right? And these are the ones that secrete acids, different kinds of acids and amylases within those that then secrete this into the gastric pit and then into the greater stomach. And then after this, uh, the, this allows the digestion of um, the material that I talked about. Um, so that's the lesson today for gastric secretions and uh, the physiology of that. Um, thank you very much, and uh, maybe I can do this next time again.